Folks, we found it. We found it. The vaguest pattern ever written in the history of crochet patterns. We found it right here. Mark this day in history on this channel because we just found it. We found it right here. Mark this day. Petition your governors for a national holiday because we finally found the most Vegas pattern ever written. Hello, welcome to Just Vintage Crochet and it's that time again, mystery pattern. So if you're new to the channel, I have a bunch of patterns here that my son picked out. He cut out all the pictures, if there were any pictures. He blacked out all the titles, blacked out any indication what it might be and all we have is the text to work on. We won't know what it is until we're done. Here we go. We just pick a random number. We see the corresponding number next to the pattern and that's what we work. And then they all have their, their dates next to them. Now these patterns are gonna range from the 1840s to the 1980s, so everything. Here we go. Make sure nothing else flew out. And what are you open? Number 10. Let's see what number 10 is. Well, it's not going to be any of our new ones because the new ones are right here on top. So let me go through these real quick and find us number 10. Folks, we found it. We found it. The vaguest pattern ever written in the history of crochet patterns. We found it right here. Mark this day in history on this channel because we just found it. Here's the pattern. It's not the shoes. This is the pattern right here. <laughs> three shades of violet, three of stone and white. Increase as the last and work one row of each shade. I'm gonna do probably two patterns in one today because this one may turn out to be quite the fail and I don't have all the colors it's asking for. Like I only have two shades of white. I don't have any shades of, of violet or of stone and it's not telling us a hook size. It's not telling us a yarn size. It's just telling us colors and to increase as the last and work row one of each shade. So let's play with this a little bit. We don't have a stitch count or nothing. So maybe because we don't have a stitch count, we start with no stitches. Just, just hang on a minute. Maybe we start with no stitches and our first stitch is an increase. I know that sounds stupid. Just, I'm gonna chain two and work, I don't know what. I'm gonna chain three and in the first stitch of the chain three, the first one I made, I'm gonna work a double crochet. Okay, so there is an increase. Now, increase as the last and work one row of each shade. Okay, here's an increase. And I'm really trying. And here is an increase. Are we just supposed to increase every row? Maybe it's a shawl. Maybe we are supposed to increase like it's a shawl. It doesn't say to work open work or anything like that. So I'm going to increase here. Maybe this is a shawl, you guys. I'm gonna work one in between, one in each stitch between the increases, and then my last stitch, I'm gonna work an increase. <sighs> I think this might be a shawl. And yes, we are definitely gonna pick another pattern. Oh, that's kind of a funny looking shawl, isn't it? because this can't be it. This cannot be our mystery pattern. I feel like we've been cheated. I think it's a shawl. I think that it starts with no stitches, but starts with an increase. And you just keep increasing every row, you change the color. And I'm picturing it now in my head. Three shades, 
three shades of violet to create an ombre, three shades of stone to create an ombre, and white to create an ombre. So is this an ombre shawl like ombre waves? I can't stand it anymore. We that's it. That's that's it. We're done. Yay! Okay, let's pick another pattern, but let's find out what the vaguest pattern on earth is meant to be. Another another what? It was a shawl. Okay. I feel like I feel like I win. <laughs> it's a shawl. It just, it, you know, when it said to increase as the last and work one row in each shade, I thought to myself, it doesn't start off with a stitch count, maybe because it doesn't start off with any stitches, stitches, but instead it starts off with an increase, which is why I started with the chain three and then into the first stitch or into the first chain, I worked that double crochet because I... I just had a feeling. I just had a feeling. That's a terrible pattern. <laughs> you're a terrible pattern and you're fired. Okay, this one here, done. Never been happier to tear up a number. Let's pick another number. There's still another pattern from this book. I think we have one more pattern from this book to finish and this whole book is done. So this page is done. We've done this pattern. This was the second mystery pattern we ever did right here. All right, guys. Let me get my stack of patterns here because that was a little wah, 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 wah. It's like a fail, but a win at the same time. At least I'm kind of patting myself on the back right now over that one. I'm not going to lie. Let's pick another number. Maybe we'll get one of our new patterns. I don't know. One pop out. All right, come on, pick us a good one. Pick us a good one. Don't give us another one like that number 10. Although I don't think there's another pattern on earth that exists like number 10, 11. <laughs> okay, let's look for pattern number 11. Just a moment, let me go through these. Here's the last pattern right here of that whole book. Here we have number 11 right here. Wants us to work. 24 long stitches. Let me find this book. I'm pretty sure long stitches. What is the year of this pattern? There's no year. All right, guys, hang on a minute. Let me go look this. Let me look this book up. I'm not going to look this pattern up. You know, I am extremely honest with this, but I want to see if they have any teachings. A lot of these books will tell you in the very beginning of the book, what do they mean by a long crochet, for example. And I want to know what year this is from. I mean, they're using words like betwixt. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a UK book. So this is probably going to be 1840s or 1850s. Just a moment. Okay, just wanted you to see, I found the book based on the border. See the border and then the border of our pattern. So now we can find out what year is our book from. And let me slide over a little. And that way you can see I'm not looking up the pattern. Um, here's the date right here. I don't think it's from 1751. I don't know what date this is. James, you know Roman numerals? Yeah, yeah. Can you come look at this date and tell me what this date is right here? Right here. Oh, wait, the, all of those numbers? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, that is big. <laughs> <laughs> M D C C C. That's an M. Okay. That's eighteen hundred. Okay. X L. Yeah. forty. V I I I. Eighteen forty eight. Okay. Thank you. You are Mr. Smarty Pants. Look, and that's only on one cup of coffee, girl. <laughs> okay. M, the M looked almost unreadable. Right. All right. Let's see. What does it say? Ooh. Golly. Let's see, explanation of stitches, long. Catch the thread, here we go. Catch the thread, catch the thread round the needle before you insert into the work. Draw the thread through the work, then through one loop, then through two loops, then through the two loops remaining on the needle. So it's a double crochet. 
just wanted to make sure. They're double crochet, insert your needle, the edge of the chain stitch into the edge, upper edge, so the back loop. Work, draw the thread through, then through the two loops. That's a single crochet. The single crochet guaranteed it's gonna be a slip stitch and then the chain stitch. So that is our explanation of stitches. I don't wanna scroll down any further because I don't wanna hit any patterns, but there we are. Group effort to figure out the date of this book, 1848. Thank you, Roger. All right, let's get into the pattern. So it says to tie a loop and work 24 long stitches into it. So I'm just gonna make a small chain and form it into a loop. You can also do a, uh, I'm gonna do a magic circle actually. Okay. Cause that's gonna make, yes, I know that's a modern technique. Please forgive me for that in this moment. So we want 24 long stitches. So I will work three, that makes one, two, three, and four, and five. I'll be right back. I've got to work 24 long double crochet. Here I have my 24 double crochet, and we could put a modern pencil right through there. It's right on through. We could put a whole crochet hook through it. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to go ahead and join. It doesn't say to join. It doesn't say how to end it at all, but you know, we'll figure it out as we go what I should have done. So now it says here, put one long stitch into every other chain stitch. These are the chain stitches because they are the stitches attached to the chain. Put one long stitch into every other chain stitch and make four chain stitches betwixt each long stitch. So I'm gonna start with my chain three and three, one, two, three. Four, that's four chain stitches. Skip one and into the next stitch over. We work a double crochet, chain four. One, two, there is a hair. Three and four. Skip one. Oh, no, I'm seeing a shadow. My bad. <laughs> there we go. One, two, three, four. I think I'm going to regret using Lauren. A uh, yarn this big. One, two, three, four. But I'm going to keep going. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to work this all the way around. My way all the way around. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to join one, two, three into the third chain from the bottom of our starting chain. There we go. Now, let's see, what do we do next? Put two long stitches into the chain stitch above the long stitch in the last round, making a chain of four betwixt each two long stitches. Long stitches now between each two like this, or do I put like two double crochet, chain four, and then two double crochet over here, chain four, I don't know what they mean. Put two double crochet into the chain stitch over here, off to the side, maybe? Is that what they mean by above? Above the chain, wait, do they mean like on top of the, on top of the double crochet? Just a moment. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try I'm going to try this both ways. I'm going to put two double crochet into the top of this stitch and then chain four and put two double crochet into the next stitch over. I'll do that a couple of times and then we'll just watch. Here we go. One, two, three, four, and then another. One, two, okay. Then chain four. four. And then I'm going to put two into here one and two. Okay, I'm gonna do is put one double crochet, chain four, and one double crochet. And I'll do that one more time. Oh, nope, no chain. We just jump straight over 
and we work one double crochet, chain four, and one double crochet. This yarn's getting kind of stretched out a little bit. So there we go. I like this way better, if I'm honest. It looks lacier. Let's see what it says here. Three double crochet stitches above the two in the last. Okay, last round. Putting two into the second stitch, making a chain of four betwixt. It's the first way. It is the first way. So what they're basically saying to do for the next round up that we have to work is to work one double crochet here and work two here, then chain four and do it again. One double crochet here and two here. So it is this way right here is the way that we are supposed to do this. Okay. So I'm gonna finish working it like this all the way around. All right, I'll be right back. We are ready. I went ahead and just joined to the top of that starting chain three. Now we're ready to do round three and we already read it. We're gonna work three double crochet into the two double crochet that we just worked with a chain four betwixt each three double crochet. I like saying betwixt. Okay, one, two, three, and then two into the next one over like it says. Okay, so all done with the fourth round. Now it looks like it's just going to keep repeating. So the fifth round is the same as the last, only putting five above the four, but keeping the chain four the same. The next round put six above the five with the chain of four betwixt each. Then put seven above the six, then the chain of four betwixt each seven. Put eight for the eighth round, nine for the ninth round, all with a chain of four, 10th for the 10th round. 11th round is where we're going to change. So I'm gonna continue to work in this fashion until we have 10 double crochet separated by chain fours, okay? Because there's no sense in me coming on here every single round whenever it's the same thing, we're just adding another stitch. So there we go. So for fifth round all the way to the 10th round, I'm just gonna keep working in this fashion, adding one more stitch to this portion separated by a chain four. So we'll work this one together and then I will see you whenever we are ready to work round 11. That is one double crochet, that chain three. The next one over is two. Next one over is three. Next one over is four and five into the same stitch. And there we go. And then the next round up, we will do one, two, three, four, five, six. After that, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All separated by a chain four. It's all the same. So I will see you guys at when we're ready to work round 11. At least should have used a smaller yarn. <laughs> if this is round 10, uh, and we're already at, I mean, think about it. We have to go up to like round 26 or 28, something like that. We are already at almost a foot. <laughs> I don't care. I'm going to keep going. Whatever this is, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's a doily. It, it would be really cute for a small round, like end table or something. It'll be really cute. So I'm going to keep going. So the 11th round, put nine double crochet above the 10. You now leave off putting two into the last stitch. Make a chain of five betwixt each nine. So now we're gonna decrease, so like a diamond. So now we're gonna decrease. So start off with our chain of three and we work nine. So just one into Every stitch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, that's gonna leave one completely undone, isn't it? Wait. You now leave off putting two in the last stitch. I don't I don't want to leave one stitch completely undone like that. I don't like that. 
What if what if we did that? That way there isn't a weird mm, just do what it says, Karina. But it feels like it's gonna be weird. Not crazy about that. Just leaving one stitch completely unworked like that. I don't like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we work five betwixt three, four, five. And we do it again. I don't like leaving one stitch just completely empty like that. I do not. It's bothersome. <laughs> but I'm going to just follow the pattern, trust the process, right? I feel like it's trying to make like a diamond doily, but that's just so, you know, it's just like, ah, my eyes just go straight to that one unworked stitch. I don't like it. But I'm going to follow the pattern, so I will be right back. Go. I've slip stitched into the top. Now, 12th round, put eight above the nine. Is it more of the same? Eight above the nine, then make a chain of, oh, wait a minute, make a chain of three. And put a long stitch or a double crochet into the middle stitch of the chain in the last round, then three chain stitches, and again, the eight long stitches. We're still, I just, yeah, I couldn't get over that the whole time. Uh, anyways. Okay, so let's do eight. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. It's crazy. We went from one of the vaguest patterns to one of the almost easiest to read and understand as if it were a modern day pattern. That's crazy. And this one is older than the last one we wore. Nope, nope, they're from the same era. They're both 1840s. Okay, so there's our eight. Now we chain three and we count, we have five chains. So we just count one, two, and in the third chain over, we work a double crochet into that chain stitch three chains and we work our eight. So that's going to be the repeat all the way around to, let me do it one more time. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Chain three, One, two, and in the third chain over, we work our double, and then chain three. There we go. I will be, let me say that again. I will be right back. Okay, so I finished working the last round. <clears throat> now on to the 13th round, so that was the 12th round. Oh, that's my microwave. I'm sorry. Okay, now it says to make seven double crochet over the eight, then a chain of three, and a long stitch or a double crochet into the center stitch of the two chains in the last round, making a chain of three betwixt each double crochet and the seven long. Well, we don't have any chains of two, we have chains of three. Do they just mean in the middle of the, and like in, in like in the, the two chain, so the second chain, maybe that's what they mean. So let's try that. Because I'm not exactly sure just what they mean, because we don't have any chain twos. That's three, four, five, six, and seven. 
chain three. And I think it just means to skip the first stitch and in the next stitch as in chain over, put it there. But then what do we do with this one in the middle? Then a chain of three and a double crochet into the center stitch of the two chains. Oh, you know what? Into the center stitch of the two chains right here. So another double crochet right here. Because that's what it means of the two chains. So let me do that at one again. So in other words, we've got two sets of chains here and a stitch in the center of them. That's what it's referring to. Just words it in a way that we don't word things. That's okay. Okay, so that's the repeat all the way around. Let's see here. I'll just do that one more time real quick. Chain three double crochet over the double crochet, which I don't know why it didn't just say work along over the top of the long, like it's making it more complicated. Okay, guys, that's what we're doing. I'll be right back. Okay, I was just looking at our instructions again, and it's kind of worded in a way here where it says making a chain of three betwixt each long stitch and the seven long stitch. Am I doing this right? Because isn't this going to make this last row tight and curl up if we do it this way? Or are we supposed to be working one double crochet here, chain three, double crochet here, chain three, and then, you know what I mean? Like one here, one here separated by a chain three, and then chain threes here with the seven is that what we're supposed to be doing because isn't working it like this isn't that going to cause it to curl i don't seven then a chain of three and a long stitch into the center stitch of the two chains in the last round making a chain of three betwixt each long stitch and the seven long stitches. I mean, maybe I'm doing, well, let's see, what is the next one? When in doubt, look at the next round. So put six long stitches over the seven and one long stitch into the center of the chain in the last round. So now it's being specifically, it's being specifically, I'm leaving. <laughs> Anyways. Now it is actually being specific and it's saying to work a double crochet into the center of the chain in the last round with the chain of three betwixt each single long stitch and also the six long stitches. You now have three single long stitches. Three. One, two, three. Okay, well, I guess we keep going this way then. Okay, so let's figure up the math on this. If it says that in the next round we now have three, what would we have if we went one? We'd have one chain three space. Two, we'd have two chain three spaces. No, that would give us four chain three spaces if we were to do it the way I'm assuming. So I think we do keep going the way we're going. I think we are on the correct path here. So just wanted to, I guess I just wanted to share that with you. I think we are on the correct path. So I'll be right back. You know what? I think I'm wrong. I think, I think it is worked up like this. Chain three, double crochet. Okay, I'm just doing it fast. I know it goes into the second chain. Chain three, double crochet, and then chain three, and work the row of double crochets 
so that the next time around, it says we're meant to have three. See, I'm just looking ahead. We aren't on the 14th round. I'm just looking ahead. And it says you now have three single long stitches. One, two, three. So I do think we're supposed to do it this way. So I'm gonna go back and start this row over again and do it that way. So I will be right back. So just finished up that round there. That is how we are looking. It's crazy how it seems like, okay, it's fine. Moving right along. Now we're gonna do the six double crochet over the seven and one double crochet into the center of the chain in the last round with the chain of three betwixt each single long stitch or each double crochet. Also the six double crochet stitches. So uh, I read that wrong, but you get what it means. We're gonna work three chain, a chain three between each double crochet and the six double crochet. You now have three double crochet stitches. Okay. Chain three for our first double. That is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Chain three and skip one stitch and the next stitch over. So the, we have three here, so we're working in that middle chain. Work one double, one, two, three. In that middle chain, work another double, one, two, three, and one more time. And I do believe we got it right on the last round. I think it's almost inarguable. That doesn't mean no one will argue. <laughs> it just means that they probably shouldn't. Okay, so that is our round repeat. Okay, I will be okay, right here back. Here we go, finished with the 14th round. Now on to the 15th round, put five over the six double crochet in the last round and the single crochet stitches and the chain in the same manner as you did the last. Okay, you will have four single stitches in this round. When I mean say single, they mean like this, in individual double crochet instead of all in a row. Okay, here we go. One, two, three for our first double. That makes one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, skip right there. One, two, three, skip the first chain and in the middle, work a double. One, two, three, skip the first chain and in the middle. It should look like that. See how we're working in that middle chain? One, two, three. And one more time. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five. There we go. One, two, three, four. So, looking good. Okay. I will be back when I finish this round. Just read on, and I think I'm gonna give myself homework here because the 16th round is exactly what we're doing here, except for we now have five single stitches and we work four over the top. And then the 17th round is the same. We put three above the four and work, in the, work the single stitches in the same manner. You will now have six single long stitches in this round. 18th, put two stitches above the three, work in the same manner as the former rounds. So I guess we'll have seven in the next one up. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of homework and just keep working in this manner 
19th. This round is okay. So I'm going to keep working this page here. I'm going to finish all of these. And when I finish the 18th round, I'll be back. So it's the same as what we've been doing. It's just we're reducing one more stitch here and adding one more here. So I will be back. That way this video isn't over an hour long. <laughs> okay, so I see the method to the madness of just not working the last stitch. Of course, I've seen something like this similar. So I'm over myself on that one. Okay, this round is all single long stitches. So this is all going to be double crochet stitches with a chain of three betwixt, betwixt each. <laughs> Observe always to put a stitch above the two in the last round and one in the center of the chain three. So observe always to put a stitch in the two of the last round basically means to work this stitch right here, right here, this one. So we'll start with our chain three for our one double crochet, then chain three more and work into the chain. three. So this whole round is going to be worked just like this with the exception of working one double crochet into the top of the first of the two. Yeah, this is getting to be big. This was clearly, I think, meant to be worked with definitely a thread. That's okay. I mean, look at the colors though. Wouldn't have had that with just a plain old white thread. I have no regrets, no regrets. <laughs> All right, coming up on the end of this section. One, two, three. We work one double crochet and we just keep going. Okay, that is the repeat all the way around. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I only put... I guess I only worked two chains here. Or did I work three? No, I only worked two. So what I'll do in this situation, just to keep it centered, is just work around the whole chain space and that'll help keep it appearing to be centered. There, see, it's fine. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna keep working this all the way around and I will be back for round 20. Okay, now we are ready for the 20th round and the 20th round is basically just like the 19th round, only we don't have any, you know, two stitches to work into. We're not gonna work into the tops of any stitches. We're just going to continue to work a double crochet into the chains all the way around not every chain but the center chain you know the center chain just like we've been doing here so that's all that this round is and i'll read that to you here put one double crochet in the center of the chain in the last round and a chain of three between betwixt each stitch so that's all we're doing one two three one two, three, and right there. Okay. So that's it all the way around. And I will see you at round 21. There we go. Okay, so I've been fighting and fighting with this next round trying to figure it out, the uh, 21st round. 
I, I frogged it twice now, and I think this is the way it's meant to be done. So I'm gonna show you how and what it says and why I came to this conclusion. So you're gonna start off by slip stitching over into the first chain. Okay, it says here, put three double crochet into the three chain stitches of the last round and make one chain stitch between each three long stitches. Now, at first I thought that was between each and every double crochet, but I think that's between the group of three double crochet because the next one, the next round says, make a chain of five and join it into every open between the three long stitches. Now that I don't think that means between each and every stitch. I think that's gonna be between the groups right above this double crochet. So I'm just gonna show you. So chain three for our first double and then into each stitch, into each chain, make a double. And then chain one, jump over this double and start working into the chains again, working three double crochet in a row. And then the next round up, I believe we're going to work into this chain space between the three doubles, not between each double, I think. If I'm wrong, I guess we'll find out as we keep working and I have to frog it again. <laughs> so this is what I am going to do all the way around. Like I said, I tried it two different ways and it just started to cause a ruffle and a curl on the edge. And I don't think this is intended to have a ruffle or a curl on the end. Like it was um, not curl, but it was like too many stitches. It was over packing. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna continue to work in this fashion right here, just like this. I got that last round all the way on. Now we move on and we will Wrong row. Here we go. Make a chain of five and join it into every open between the three double crochet stitches in the last round with a single crochet stitch. So I think what we need to do, let's see here, just start from here. I mean, we need to be in a space, don't we? Hmm. Or if I can come back like this. No. Nope. Don't I don't want to be on top. Maybe the chain one will help. I need to be back this way into the space. It doesn't say to go back, but okay, one, two, three, four, five. And then work a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five. And work a single crochet. Two, three, four, five. Single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and a single. So I think this is what we are meant to do all the way around. I tried to get back into the center part of this chain space. I mean, there we go. Just kind of move it over a little, huh? Okay, I'm going to work this all the way around. Fingers crossed it's correct because, man, this took me about 35 minutes to do this last round right here. So I'd hate to have to frog it again. The other two I got about that far, you know, and then just frogged it. So it wasn't a huge sacrifice. This is completely done. And yeah, it took me about 35 minutes to do. So, <laughs> okay, I'll so be back. Finished up this round. I just slip stitched into the starting single crochet here. Here we go. Now we put three single crochet stitches in the center of the five chain stitches of the last round and make a chain of five between each th 
three long stitches. Huh? We didn't work any long stitches. Make a chain of five between the three long. Okay, we didn't work any long stitches. Put three single crochet in the center of the chain five stitches of the last round and make a chain of five between each three long stitches. We didn't make any three long stitches. This is the only thing I can think of to do and just ignore the fact that it said long stitches. So I slip stitched, here we go. I just slip stitched one stitch up and then in and one chain up and then in the second chain let me say that again and then in the second chain i worked my first of three single crochet and then chain five and skip the first chain and starting in the second chain up i work three single crochet in a row So this is the only thing I can think of to do because I just don't know because even in this round, this last round we worked, there's nothing about working long stitches. So, okay. Um, I'm just going to keep going. I'll be right back. So I think I messed up way back here on this row where I just can't seem to figure out what it is that they meant. Now, the reason I say that is because as I was making this row, I started to think, and it says to put one single crochet stitch into the center of the chain five and make a chain of three between each single crochet stitch. So I wanted to test it out because I thought to myself, isn't that going to cinch it closed and yeah it does it's a mess you see it's not right i messed up way back here on this row where i just can't seem to grasp what it is that they want because when i did it the way it was written literally taking the pattern literally it was it was very very wavy it was very compact now does that mean this is meant to be a ruffle i don't know maybe Turns out this book doesn't have any pictures. Not that I went looking for pictures, but this book does not have any pictures. So I just, I went with this because I figured, see how flat this is? I mean, it just lays, it wants to lay flat. And I thought, surely this is meant to be flat. And it was just really just a lot of stitches in one, just making it very ruffled like this, like this. It was very, very roughly like that. And um, so, yeah, that's this is almost two hours worth of work now. Yeah, it's nearly 10 a.m. It's almost two hours worth of work now. That is just so much to undo. What do we think? Would we be terribly mad at me if we were to call this done? Maybe even eliminate the last row here with these little loops? Hang on a moment. Okay. Last row is gone. I like it better like this. It looks like a table topper. It's huge. Let me get the tape measure. It is 21 inches in diameter. I really like it though as a table topper and look at that beautiful color gradient. I feel like I messed up so bad on this round right here. Um, I kind of want to call it here. And please don't be upset with me that I didn't go all the way to the 28th round, but I made it to round like 22 or 23, something like that. Um, but what do you guys think? I love it. What do we think? Are we mad at me? Are we mad at me for cutting rug early? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it, so even though I wasn't able to completely finish 100% the pattern, I'm still proud of myself for getting at least this far. You know, we're talking about a pattern that's almost 200 years old, but to be fair, the pattern was fairly well written until the part where I just, me personally, I couldn't comprehend this. I'm sure that there are dozens of you watching that comprehended it from the jump, but you know, we're not all the same, so. 
I was not able to successfully comprehend what they meant here. Um, that or I was able to comprehend what they meant and I just didn't agree with it because I just didn't like the way it looked like overpacked like that. But I am still proud of myself for at least making it this far. I still love the way it looks. It's still a beautiful table topper. See what this is supposed to be. Oh, you're really down on there. Okay. Very pretty. Oh no. Oh no, we're losing words. Doily for for a salver. I don't know what a salver is. Just a moment. Let me look that up. It is a fancy serving tray, typically made of silver and used in formal circumstances. So that's nice. Well, I didn't quite get it right, but I mean, let me look up some pictures of salvers and see if they're supposed to be ruffled on the end. Every single one I'm looking at right now, now that doesn't mean that it's the rule, you know, but they're all flat. They don't have any ruffles on the edges. And some of these are absolutely stunning. Google it, just Google, um, doily for a salver s-a-l-v-e-r and you'll see what i mean these are beautiful someone is selling one on etsy for 105 bucks yikes um but yeah okay so yeah i don't think it was meant to be ruffled on the end so i wasn't doing it right i wasn't comprehending the pattern right i feel confident in saying that so i am proud of myself for at least making it this far and if we're honest it's still a very useful doily for a salver so there we go guys i like it let me know what you think in the comments i can handle the brutality <laughs> and i will see you guys in the next mystery love you lots okay. bye put something under there to shape it and stiffen it and it could be a hat although i that's kind of dumb because i'm fairly certain i used the wrong size thread Sure. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Do it. Let's do this. Okay. Get that out of the way. Here we go. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I I don't feel no.